Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this morning. We glorify your name. Thank you, Jesus, for helping us to be here this morning to hear the word of God. And we bless you, Jehovah God, for everybody who have honored you. It's not easy to wake up early in the morning. It's not easy to wake up and prepare kids to come. It's not easy to come with our, our clients. But Jehovah God, I thank you because they chose you. And you said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And every other thing shall be added unto you. So I pray, Jehovah God, after we have come in your, to your house, of, in your house of God and worship you, we pray that our life will be made easy in Jesus' name. That wherever we step, we step with you. Because we are not just going for, for minimum, but we are going for additional. Because that is your promise that you promised us. We thank you in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody say the amen. Before I continue, um, on the 15th of next month, it's about a month from now, we have a director of Kufai, a Christian United for Israel. Those are the people who sponsored me to go to Israel this year. He's coming. He's going to different places, and he said he'll be available that Sunday to come. So he'll be preaching morning service and uh, 11 o'clock, uh, 9 and 11 o'clock service will be here. So we invite you to come, plan ahead. Maybe you may not be able to make it to the second service, but you can make it first service, and it's going to be good. Praise the name of Jesus. He has been to Israel so many times. It's like his second home. And that's the person who can tell us. You see, the Bible says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. It's not an option. It's a command. So what is the connection between our faith and Judaism? What is the connection between us and Abraham, etc.? You're going to learn a lot. Uh, he, uh, when he comes, he's going to preach that Sunday. And I'm excited that next year I'm taking a group of about 12, 14 people to Israel with me, with my wife. It's going to be exciting. Amen. So God is increasing our influence. And when he goes back, he will know like in Iowa, there is another church. Amen. I believe you have, you have been to many, many churches. But we are not like, bring that title there. We are not like that, okay? I bring the title of my message today. We are not like that. Amen. Because... Uh, it's, it's very important for us to make sure that we are here to make a difference. And I know one thing about many, uh, we are 90% African. One thing with the common denominator for African churches, we get late all the time. But we are not like, we are not like that, amen? We are not like that. And as you find some churches whereby it's just one region. In fact, if there's a problem in that country, the church goes down because we are too much like we are Sudanese, we are Kenyans, we are Liberian, but we are not like, can I hear that cloud and clear? We are not like, praise the name of Jesus. And you find some churches whereby, you know, there are white people and African-American, but here we are not like, we are here to show the goodness of God. So come one, come all, because that is our responsibility. So the title of the message today, we are not like that. Last week, we read some scriptures, and we, we saw that uh, we, we, are, we are different. We are not just like that. We are different people. We are being called by God. And to going back, we talked about we are the light of the world. Last week, we talked about I'm the light of the world. I, I shine the light of God. And then today we sang about what? I ascend in the higher ground. Amen? That, that's the correct song. Mountain of the Lord. I mean, we bring honor. We bring what? Justice. Judgment. We bring what? Justice. Justice. We bring what? We don't, you, mean, you sound like a judge. You bring what? Light. You are light. Amen? And what else? We bring the truth of God. So we are not just a bunch of people going to church and be blessed and go home. No. We are people who are here to bring judgment. It's where we can speak on behalf of God. Praise the name of Jesus. Turn with me in the book of, uh, of uh, First Peter, chapter number 2. We are, we are going to focus in two verses. Verse number 5 and verse number 9. And I'll pray for me so that I can stay still here and the cameraman don't have to move so fast because I move like crazy. Amen. All right. Verse number five, shall we read together from the screen? And you are living stones that God is building into his spiritual temple. What more? You are his Holy Spirit, priest, through 
the mediation of Jesus Christ, you offer spiritual sacrifices that pleases God. All right. I skipped something there. So, and uh, you are a living stone that God is building into his spiritual temple. Pray the name of Jesus. What are the characteristics of living organism? Those who went to school many, many years, or maybe you went like last year, there are about several characteristics of living organism. Number one, you're going to biology, biology a little bit, okay? They can die. Amen? Number two, they reproduce. Number three, they grow. Am I right? I don't know. <laughs> and then number, okay, there are a bunch of them. But I think the most important thing is like, hey, they can die. If they live, there is death. Number two, they can multiply or reproduce. So the Bible says that you are a living stone. So if you are a living stone, there are two possibilities. Number one, you can die. So it be a dead stone, which we are not praying for that at all. We pray against that. But number two also, you remember that you can grow. If you are a stone weighing two pounds this year, spiritual pound, ten years from now, you should not be weighing the same because you are growing. You are a living. Hallelujah. There is life in you. Now, God says that you are a living stone. God is building a house, a spiritual temple. Say a spiritual temple. If there is a spiritual temple, there is also a physical temple. In the Old Testament, God told them, build a place that I can come and visit with you. In the New Testament, we don't need to build a place. Jesus lives inside of us. So we are a living temple of God. Pray the name of Jesus. I know this is a, is, is a monkey road a little bit because of what is being taught out there. But I'm telling you, we choose a place to worship God. Like this is our place where we are coming to worship God. However, God does not live here. So when we stand here, God is with us together. When we step in here and go somewhere else, whether it's a school or wherever we go, whether it's a nursing home, when we go there, God is with us. So the presence of God does not... They are depending on a certain geographical position is that we carry it with us because now we are a living temple. Praise the name of Jesus. Let me give you a story. A few years ago, uh, tomorrow we'll be in, in South Dakota, Margaret and I, Pastor Margaret and I, we are going for our, our, our pastor's conference. One of these pastor's conferences, the, the beauty about this, you hear from other people what they are doing. Now there's this couple, they, 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 they minister between Sioux Falls and Sioux City. That area. I don't know if they're in South Dakota or, Minnesota or, or, or Iowa. I don't know. But we are meeting with them. We are talking to them about three years ago. They told us the move of God in their place. They decided to host youth meeting on Wednesday, uh, whereby high school kids will come to their house. So they started with a few of them. Before they knew, they were 30. So they had a problem of a meeting place. Pray the name of Jesus. Kids started driving two hours away for Wednesday night from high school. There is a revival in this place. So when they, they found like it is becoming big, they don't know what to do, they went to a funeral home. In the funeral home, there's a place they call chapel. They rented that chapel. And guess what? They had a, over 100 students attending service every Wednesday night. Where? In the church? Where? In the where? Where? So in the funeral home, there are no sick people there. There are dead bodies. So on this side, there are dead bodies. On this side, they are worshiping God. And God is moving. Amen. So stop this idea that when we are in this place, you know, God can be anywhere. When you stand here with the presence of God, this becomes an altar of God. If a politician stands here, this becomes a politician podium. So I want you to understand because this needs to click in your head. That wherever you are going, you don't have to wear some special clothes to come to church on Sunday because church is just a gathering of saints. And we honor God for that. But even when you are at your working place, you are a priest. Tell your friend, I'm a priest. Amen. Hallelujah. What's the work of the priest? The priest during the old covenant, the priest was somebody who is standing between people and God. You had no... Uh, option of going to see God. You have to come to the priest. 
and uh, you have to bring an animal, confess your sin, and then the priest will take that, slaughter that animal, take the blood, go to the Holy of Holies. Hallelujah. We have a good example here. So that is the court where you, everybody meet. Here is the holy place. And then there is a small door there. That one is called the Holy of Holies. Now, the priest has option or have a mandate of coming to this place and offer sacrifice and pray for people. But once in every year, he will go to the Holy of Holies. Inside there, you are not allowed to go. And if you mess up, you die. Pray the name of Jesus. How many people today care? If you don't give tithe, God will punish you because they are going to the Old Testament. It's good, like you do this, I punch you. You know, you punch me, I punch you back. That's, that's the Old Testament stuff. So what happened that if you are going there, Pastor Noel is going there to offer a sacrifice, we don't know if he will come back or he will die. So what they did, they tied him a rope. And you go in there. It's a serious matter. So if you mess up, what they do, they retrieve you by pulling because you are not allowed to go there. You see what Jesus did for us? When he died, he said, it is finished. And the, 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 the cup, the, what's called? The curtain that separated these people to his presence was torn into two. So each one of us has a right now to become the priest and bring their things to God and also pray for other people. Pray the name of Jesus. So you are the priest. Hallelujah. So we are the priest. Praise the name of Jesus. The Bible says uh, to offer spiritual sacrifices. Now, in this era, we don't give a sacrifice. Our giving is a worship. Let me repeat again. You don't bring a sacrifice. You bring an offering as an act of worship. Because the sacrifice was given already 2,000 years ago. So it's wrong for you to come and say, I'm going to sacrifice. It means like you are demeaning the blood of Jesus. You have to understand we bring spiritual sacrifices. That's why when you come today, in that day, he said, no one should go to the house of the Lord empty handed because they have to come and sacrifice. But today we come to worship God. So even if you don't have anything in your, man, in your money, money-wise, you can still come to the worship of God. Why? Because this is what the Bible says. It's not in the scripture. It's not on the screen. But in the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 1, the Bible says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the masses of God, to present your bodies as a living and uh, holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual Service of worship. Praise the name of Jesus. So you cannot say, I don't have money. When you come to the Lord, you bring your spiritual sacrifice. What is the way you live your life? You offer your body as a living sacrifice. So it's not right for you to say, I'm going to sacrifice something. No, you cannot sacrifice because God sacrificed for Jesus himself, the son of, G of God, will sacrifice for you. So we come, when you have this understanding, huh? when you have this understanding, you understand when I'm going to work, I'm not just there to make money. I am a priest to bring these people to God. I'm the priest to intercede for people. I'm the priest to speak good news for God, to, of God to people. I'm here to show the light of God. Praise the name of Jesus. Now the next verse says, but you are not like that. For you are chosen people. Say chosen people. You are a royal priest, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of the darkness into the wonderful light. Praise the name of Jesus. He called you to the wonderful light. So each one of us, each one of us, we were in darkness. Darkness can be the occult that we are practicing. But also darkness can be darkness here. Can you touch yourself you know, here? Most of the time this place has a lot of darkness. And darkness is not evil, it's ignorance. Praise the name of Jesus. 
uh, you know, when you, 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 you venture into something that you don't know, you find yourself like, man, I didn't know this. I, I can just do this. Every time you discover stuff, when you go to college, maybe you finish high school and you go to college, you are the same person. But when you sit there after one year, there's something that they are, they are removing the veil and give you the light. So you come back, you say, wow, I used to think this way, but now I think this way because your knowledge has been enlightened. So when we talk about enlightenment, all of us here, we are in darkness. Maybe we used to go somewhere and sacrifice what Jesus had already done and say, hey, you know what? Jesus did it for us. So we, we bring light. We are, we are called into the kingdom of light. Pray the name of Jesus. And not only that we are called to the kingdom of light, but also we become the light of the world. Praise the name of Jesus. I, I was talking to one of my, my daughters and uh, going through a lot of challenges of life. You see, in life we go through challenges uh, in one way or another. Most of the time we go through challenges because it's part of life. Hallelujah. That's a, a, a don't come generation. You don't know how to use that thing. Can you help him, help him, help him, help him? Praise God. <laughs> Bring it down. Everybody is... You have to do like that, you know. I'm an old man, you know. <laughs> so this is light. Amen. It's a lamp. So you are called to be what? A light of the world. You are not only that you are in the light, but also you are what? A light. And this is a good example. Most of the time, our glass has been tainted by like this. Because if you hold it like this, so when you come to church, what our, our responsibility is to clean up your glass so that we can shine better. Amen? And you go out there and the people talk and do this. And it, on Sunday, you look like that. And sometimes you are very, very like, there's light, but there's nothing, you know? And sometimes you are like dying. Problem bills. Eh? You have a lot of problems. Huh? Family, relationship. Eh? That guy said he likes you, and after some time he said, Who oh, are you? You look like a, a goat. And then now you feel like, mm, He insulted me. I don't want a Jesus. And you come here and say, You are beautiful, wonderfully made by God. Hallelujah. Your light started breaking like that in Jesus' name. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So you are the light of the... Tell my friend, you are the light of the world. Your job is to shine the light outside there. And, 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 and it's very important for us to know that the light is needed where there is darkness. Right now, this is irrelevant, very irrelevant. It's a bother to some of you. But if there is a blackout... For like one week in Iowa, you won't call me. You tell a teenager, call your pastor. Pastor. <laughs> you say, pastor, you know that thing? That thing that you're using, the thing? And then, uh, yeah, the lot in the hour. That one, if we can use that for one week, pastor, please. But as long as the sun and the, 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 the electric is there, the, the power is there, this is irrelevant. And you are very irrelevant when people are having good time. Hallelujah. If people are having a good time, oh, you are very, you are irrelevant. They don't want to even talk to you. But when there is a spiritual crisis, hey, 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 they start asking, do you remember that day? There's a verse you talked about. I don't know the verse, a verse, because now it's time for you to shine the light. Man, during COVID, the Lord started showing me stuff. You see, many people lost the opportunity during COVID. We have Zoom. Instead of calling people to pray with them over Zoom. You know, when there's COVID, everybody wants to pray. Can I hear an amen? Yeah, everybody wants to join the prayer meeting. And some people grew their audience like YouTube, your audience. But our, uh, some of us, we are just waiting. When is the church opening? When is the church opening? When is the church opening? Because you don't know who you are. What do you want in the church? When the church opening, what is it? Instead of you sitting down and saying, hey guys, 
I have a hope for you today. Everybody join me at 10 a.m. And you sit there, you have like 300 people join you, preach to them. No, you want to go to church. You need to be enlightened. Your mind needs to shift and understand that you are a priest. You have a responsibility. Praise the name of Jesus. Uh, so this daughter of mine called me, we shared with me, like there's some things some, somebody can share with you and you tell them, do this, do this. There are some things you just pray because they are out of control. So I said, we're going to pray. Went home, texted me, said, I came home. When I get to my house, outside, I found my neighbor. And my neighbor don't speak English. So she had left her door open waiting for me. She got to say, my daughter was praying. And she had a prophetic word. And we believe that word is for our neighbor. So he said, what is your name? She said, my name is so-and-so. And then she started talking to her using Google Translator. Pray the name of Jesus. She's translating from Google, telling her. And that young lady, she was uplifted because she had been in darkness. But this woman who do not even speak English, she chose to become the light of the world. Pray the name of Jesus. May you become that light of the world. It's risk. You have to take risk. It's not easy. So my point number one here today is this. It is an honor and a privilege to represent who? Christ. And that comes after we read that scripture in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 and 16. And this is what the Bible says in that scripture. It says that you are the light of the world. Let's read together. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put on it a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that you may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Hallelujah. So it's a privilege to represent who? To represent God. Now we have many kinds of light. When you are saved... This also is another kind of light. Amen. Today I'm full, full loaded. And this one also is kind of light. Now this one, I didn't light it because of smoke. It's going to set up smoke detectors in the house here. But when you are saved, you get the grace to have a light like this. Now some of you don't know what this is, but you light here. And I know Ben Songo knows what this is for sure. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you know that? Amen. There are some doctors and engineers who went to school by using this. Amen. That's, that's true. Hallelujah. Don't despise this. Aiden, don't despise this. This is what many of us used to go to school. Mama, mama, yeah, mama, praise God. She knows what I'm talking about. And each one of these has a name. But the problem with this is, Light from Africa. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. The problem with this is if you are moving from that place to this place, the wind will blow it off. So you have to be very protective like this. Okay? And if somebody want, if you mess up with somebody, what they do, they go with the they do Amen? And when you are born again, you are given a light like this. And most of the time, when the demons are being assigned assignment by the day, they say, get to Enkeni, take that light out, and go. Then they, not even, they just send like junior demons to you, like baby demons. Maybe somebody wanted to pray, somebody make you mad. No, the whole day is messed up because the devil just came. So on Sunday, you come back and we light for you and you go out again. So, so most of the time, if you say, can you witness? No, because you have to deal with your protection and also shine there. Pray the name of Jesus. But you don't stay here forever. Hallelujah. You must upgrade. Say upgrade. So when you are given like this, you have the power of God and the Holy Spirit. But most of the time, when you are a baby Christian, you come. Somebody offended you, you can pray. You know. So we have always to make sure protect. Some places I say, hey guys, 
We need an offering here. But whoever wants to give, give. Because some of you, when you give $20, <laughs> and then, so we, we don't do, even giving, some of our giving is like this. It's okay. It's fine, okay? As long as we protect you, you're going to grow and upgrade to what? To this one. Now, if they send a demon, go take down that light. They have to think, it won't work. So I have to find a way. How do I do that? Can I hear an amen? amen? And some of us here, when you grow, there's something that you don't even mind. Like somebody called you a dog. What's the problem? It's okay. You think, oh, man, whoa, whoa, I'm good. Hallelujah. There's no problem. Somebody called you dark and you're offended. Black, you're offended. Why? Because your level of faith is this way. But when you improve, Somebody called dark and said, yes, I'm black, I'm black, and I'm happy to be black. I'm grateful to be black. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Some of you are very tall, like a giraffe. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm a giraffe for God. But some of you just comment about your, your body, and you don't want to come to church because this guy keeps on telling me I'm gaining weight, so I'm not going to that church anymore. The church is a place to be, to worship God. People don't have to talk about people because, you know, oh, it comes back to where? Here. You did an upgrade. When you upgrade like this, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to call you a name. If you are good. And it's okay. So this is good. This is good. Don't despise this. If you don't have this in a remote place, you are doomed. But this is better. Hallelujah. How about this one? This one. Ha, ha, ha. This one. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. This is like a pressure. You can add pressure and get it. Is this one, I think, if you are in a surgery room and everything goes bad, you can have this one and continue with surgery. But the other one, you can't because if somebody screams, the light is gone. So it's very important for you. Yeah, or somebody sneeze. Huh? Somebody sneeze on this. If somebody sneezes on this, you are doomed. But this one, you can sneeze and do whatever. It's good. So... I want to encourage you and remind you that the Holy Spirit gives us the ability to upgrade from this little thing here, which is good, to this one here, to that one, and even to other, others in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So you are the light of the... Tell your friend you are the light of the world. Amen. Now, let's read this from the book of, um, of John. Chapter 5, verse number 16. And we're going to read together. Amen. Do I have some people who can read better here than me? Okay, let's read together. John chapter 15, verse number 16. Amplified version. One, two, three. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And I have appointed and placed and purposefully planted you. So that you would go and bear fruit and keep on bearing and that your fruit will remain and be lasting, so that whatever you ask of the Father in my name, as my representative, he may give to you. Pray the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. You did not call yourself. He said, okay, you are chosen, but you did not choose yourself. And be careful of the spirit of pride. Some of them say, you know what? We are Christian. We grew up here. Let me tell you something. Some of us, we came from a background where our life is like this. But God called us into this. So we are grateful. Maybe your parents were Muslim. Maybe your parents did not know Christ. You were called in this stage. It's okay. Some of you, you grew up in the church. Your parents, they are bringing you to America. They are bringing you to church in a car. Not by walk. You don't walk. You come in a car in the church. They buy you ice cream. Hallelujah. You are in this stage and you keep on going. But all this, you have to understand it. We did not choose God. He's the one who chose us. And when he chose us, this is what he did. 
He purposefully planted us. He purposefully planted you. So you are planted somewhere so that you can bear fruit. And uh, your fruit must remain. Now, this season we have tomatoes. Five months from now, unless you put it in the fridge, there won't be tomatoes in our field because it's going to be cold. But uh, here he's talking about uh, the, the fruit that will abide, which is something that will remain eternally. You see, building a house is good, but that house will never remain forever. But giving somebody life, the eternal life, that will remain forever. So we have to always remember that we are planted purposefully so that we can bear fruit and the fruit that will last. So ask your friend, do you have lasting fruits? Just ask them, do you have lasting fruits? You see, you, up to this moment, you have to come to a point to say, you see that sister, she was going through a crisis, almost dying. I led her to Christ, and she's doing there. That's my lasting fruit. You, you see, that marriage was going down. I came in, we prayed, and uh, uh, you see, we, 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 we bought that church, and people are being blessed. Teenagers are being blessed. People are coming there to do community. That's my lasting fruit. But the car that you bought, my friend, it's not a lasting fruit. Hallelujah. The shoes, Nike and Adidas and, uh, and whatever else, Jordan, all those shoes and everything, those are not lasting. You are phone. I think they have released the iPhone 15. I think, okay. So that's a big thing, okay? But it's not lasting. Because iPhone 5 was a big hit a while ago. But today, it's now. It's no more. So you have to understand that we are supposed to, to bear lasting fruit. Now, there's a point here I want you to, to write down. When planted, Christians have the ability to produce lasting fruits. When planted, Christians have the ability to produce lasting what? Fruits. Many of us, we don't have lasting fruit because we are not planted. You don't belong anywhere. Hallelujah. If we plant a tree, is, if we have an apple tree in Ankeny, Iowa, it will be there during winter, it will be there during spring, it will be there during summer. We know for sure it's planted somewhere. But some of us, we have a business of being transplanted. Two months you are in this church, five months to another church. They don't like when, when it's, things are good here at Imani. Imani is my church, 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 you are here. When things are harder, you go somewhere else. Now, if you are not planted, forget about fruit. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. We have to be what? Planted. How do you plant? You are planted when you invest in prayer. You invest in giving. You invest in in being participant of the thing of God. You don't just be planted by sitting in the church. No, it's good to sit in the church. But uh, number two, you have to be planted. When you are planted, the Bible says, you will bear fruit that last. Amen? And then he says, so that, that's the condition. Whatever you ask, huh? whatever you ask of the Father in my Name. And then there is a parenthesis there, Amplified said, as my representatives. Think about that. It should be given to you. So if I represent King, King of God, what I'm asking, I'm not asking for myself. I ask stuff for the kingdom. And because of that, the Bible, if you are planted and, and you are asking anything as a representative of Christ, God will give that to you. Maybe the reason you haven't been receiving a lot of stuff, and praying from one prayer meeting to another prayer meeting, from one apostle to another apostle, getting all the oil and uh, sand and salt and everything and clothes from India, from Jordan, all this kind of thing, and nothing is changing. Probably you need just to check. Are you planted and representing Christ? Now we don't represent Christ when there is good stuff. Jesus did not come to be represented in part. Like if people are eating, so I'm representing Christ. No, 
He came for people who are in crisis. So when somebody is in crisis, are you representing Christ? Are your friends people who need the light of God? Because I said, I am the light of the world. Therefore, go and shine the light and bring people to Christ. So if I'm not doing the work of shining the light and bringing people to Christ, forget about supernatural provision. You can only get what you work for. You work and toil and toil. Though you hear many people say, uh, America, my brother, America, this schedule, these bills, America, America, America. And some of us, we're just saying, hey, what do you need? Because if it's God's plan, we don't have to suffer. He'll produce. Pray the name of Jesus. They went in a meeting and people were hungry. And Jesus said, what do you have? They said, we have five loaves of bread and two pieces of fish. And Jesus blessed and he fed the multitude. And one day they wanted to pay taxes. So they asked Jesus, is it lawful for us to, for Jesus to pay tax? Jesus said, give Caesar what is due to him and give God what is due to him. I'm trying to paraphrase here. And then he told Peter, hey, go take this hook and go catch the fish. The first fish that you catch, open its mouth and come back. When Peter went there, there were millions of fish inside that lake. But there was one fish with money. And somehow, some way, it, it knew like God want me to go there. So it was catched. And when he pulled out, they were able to pay for their taxes. Pray the name of Jesus. Are you fishing without Jesus? Because catch nothing. Catch nothing. Catch nothing. But if you are working for God and your desire and everything is to light the word of God, there's nothing impossible with God. There's no need that you get. I don't have a car. Because sometimes your car is your car, just going to work and doing stuff. But when your car is about the kingdom of God, you want to check who did a ride here this morning. I'm going to pass here. You see, your car, God will provide for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen? Everything that you do, it has one thing, light, the light of God in this uh, generation where people are fading out. Let's go to uh, Acts chapter 17, uh, 13, verse number 47. This is what the Bible says, Acts 13, 47, New American Standard Bible. Shall we read together? One, two, three. For so the Lord has commanded us. Pause, pause there. The Lord has asked us, the Lord has suggested, or the Lord has commanded us. The Lord has commanded us. What did he say? I have placed you as a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the end of the earth. So he said, I have placed you. Many people want to have an option. I think I don't like children ministry at this church. I don't like this. I don't like the worship. So I think I'll go here. I have seen many people trying. Okay, we are going here. Children, you like this church? Uh, we don't like it. Okay, let's go. Let's try another one. They keep on trying. That's not being planted. You are being selective. But the Bible says, I have planted you. When mama came from Boston, God planted her here. She cannot live here until God says otherwise. Praise the name of Jesus. And you and somebody else and everybody, God has planted you here. Are you planted so that you can have a bigger house and you can live like the son of the king, have a chopper? You say, you know what? I'm a child of God. We're children of God. <laughs> you know, when you believe God, everything is good. You have a car, nice car, nice house. Is that the purpose? Those are additional. Those are benefits. But the reason, say, I have placed you so that you can be the light to the Gentiles. Say Gentiles. Now, Gentiles are people who are not of our own culture. You see, the problem that happened between Apostle Peter and Apostle Paul, they were not agreeing because Apostle Peter gets saved, but he maintained his Jewish roots. So they believed in salvation, but still you have to practice some Jewish stuff. 
So you say, can the jetta be saved? Oh, yeah, they can be saved, but they have to be circumcised and they have to abstain from, they are trying to add up, like the salvation is not enough until we add some old covenant stuff. And we have those people today. They don't believe that Jesus is Savior. They have to go back there and start looking for other stuff to add. Apostle Paul, when he was converted, he didn't go to Jerusalem. He was taken to the desert for three years. God taught him what to do. So when he's coming back, he's ministering to the Gentiles. And when he comes back to Jerusalem, they don't want him. They say, why have you defiled the temple? You brought people that are not of us in the temple. They were about to kill him. Pray the name of Jesus. So you are called to become the light, not your fellow Jews. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are Sudanese, you are not called to become a light to Sudanese. You are called to become a light to Gentiles. People who don't eat like you. People who don't talk like you. People who do not have any, you know, they are people of God. He said, I want to become the light to the Gentiles. Pray the name of Jesus. I thank God that Imani is the light to the Gentiles. Each one of us come from a different background. But together, we can bring salvation to many. When I meet my brother there, I believe that's what I, who I cannot reach. He can reach him. So I empower him. I bless him. I pray for him. I help him to reach his community the same way. So that together, we can become the light, not only to our demographic, but to everybody who comes under the voice of the sound of Jesus Christ from our mouths in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So we are called to become the light to the Gentiles. Tell your friend, Gentiles. Have you seen Gentiles? I'm just asking you a question. Most of us, when we go like, hey, where are you from? I'm from this country. Welcome, we have a church. Where are you from? I'm from Somalia. Boko Haram. Al-Shabaab. You don't need to come to church. You know, this is Al-Shabaab. I don't want them to come to church. Where are you from? from uh, I'm from, uh, oh, Sa Sudan. Where? South or North? I'm South. Okay, you come to church. You see, we have to understand. God never called us to reach to our fellow he called us to light to the Gentiles. So that's why I like to meet people that I don't know because I don't know what God wants me to do. But the more you do that, hallelujah, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all other things shall be added unto you. If you want divine provision from God, do what he called you to do. Become the light of the world in Jesus' name. Stand on our feet. Let us just pray. I'm uh, finishing this by reading this scripture together. Stand on our feet here. Uh, so another point there before we read that scripture, it's the command. Ours is to obey. It is a command. We just talked about that. Being planted and shining the light is not an option. It's what? It's a command. And all what we need to do is to do what? Is to obey. So let's read this together. This is what God is, the promise that he's giving us. Read us together. Let's read together. One, two, three. Two, three. Arise and you shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Hallelujah. Amen. Now turn to your neighbor and tell them, arise and shine. Arise. Who? Arise and shine. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. Arise. Maybe you are seeking in debt, but the Bible says, arise and shine. Arise. Maybe you are going through some challenges of life, but the Bible says, arise and shine. Maybe you are going through some, uh, some debt, but the Bible says, arise and shine. Hey, maybe you lost your marriage, but the Bible says, arise and, and shine. Maybe you lost your mom or your dad, but the Bible says, arise and shine. Maybe you don't have paper, but the Bible says, arise and, and shine. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't sit on the light, but arise and are you just shining by yourself? The Bible says, For the light has come, and the glory <laughs> of the Lord has risen upon you. So you are not just shining, but there is a glory of God that is risen upon you. Say, upon me. Say, upon, upon me. The glory of God has risen upon me. So when I walk, I'm not just walking just like it. I'm not like them. This is what I say. You know, in America, 
kids, they don't listen. Oh, ah, we are not like them. Tell me, we are not like them. Oh, it's so hard to raise kids in America. Uh, and some people will send their kids to Africa. To, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not trying to attack anybody. I don't know if somebody did it here in the church, but if you did, God bless you. But uh, we'll send your kids to Africa because you believe in this place is an evil place. Kids can, no, we are not like them. We stay here with our children and our grandchildren and because the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Tell your friend, I'm not like them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're not like that. The glory of God has risen upon us. So when you walk, don't just walk like another immigrant. You know, I went to a meeting one day with pastors, about 20 of them, 30 of them. So we stand there. So what they expect me to say is that we have so many problems. You know, we have several. so I stand and I give them the vision. So they say, you don't have any problems? They say, no, we are good. They kick me out. You know, let me just say this, and I know I'm lying. If you agree, people to put a level of you, you become a project. There are some people who drive car, they eat because they are helping you because you're a poor person. They are helping you because you can't speak English. Put your broken there. See, mama said, light from Africa. Did you hear her? She said, light from Africa. That's good. Don't allow people just to put you down, you know, this is cool. This for African, you know, the minority. Who told you a minority? The glory of God has written upon you. If you are applying for college, apply for the best one, Harvard. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. I don't know where you get this from. You know, all your shopping is goodwill. Even if God wants to bless you, you don't go to a mall and look for something and say, God, every time... God will not find you the goodwill. Everything, just there, goodwill, everything, goodwill, everything. You know goodwill, you know even when they stock goodwill, you know that day when they bring stuff on goodwill. Stop that. The glory of God has risen upon you. You must start going to shop as a child of God. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You see how I look like? I'm not advocating that you should just buy stuff with no baggage. But some of you, your mindset is you cannot buy anything new. Somebody has to use it, and then you buy it. You have to say, no, no, no. When you buy a new car, when you buy something, because the Bible says, arise and shine. If I'm buying the car, I don't want in the morning I'm going to preach. <laughs> in the name of Jesus, you cast up. <laughs> no, let me go debuke the demon. The car must run and come here comfortably yeah. in the mighty name of Jesus. One day I was in the East Coast and I stayed with my relatives and I was supposed to preach in a church. In the morning, I can't control her movement. So we leave late. Pastor is calling me. Where are you? The worship is almost done. Where are you? It's my first time. I get to church. The worship just finished. They said, now they're looking like, where's the pastor? I just went there. No introduction, nothing. I was so embarrassed. The Lord told me, stop having a poverty mentality. When you go to minister, find a hotel. So nowadays, I don't sleep in people's home. <laughs> and still speaking, I will really respect you when I sleep in your house. I go, I have my hotel, I have my rental car. If you want to reimburse me, fine. I walk like a child of God. I cannot do that anymore. Because God says you have to stop your poverty mentality. You have to stay with somebody that you determine your schedule, and I want you to speak. Honestly, the pastor is waiting for me. I'm not afraid. I don't know where I'm going. I'm late. Very bad. So some of you, you have to start living according to the glory of God upon your life. Yeah. Praise the name of Jesus. Yes. Worship team, come. Worship team, come. Let's take an offer again. Amen. I can preach until tomorrow because I'm excited. Amen. But I want you to know like you rise and shine for the glory of God has come and the glory has risen upon you. Praise the name of Jesus.